for that, Councillor McLeod. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm minded that this is quite a positive application. It, it meets a, a clear need and action has clearly been taken to mitigate on, on visual and, and cosmetic impacts locally. So I'm content with that. My issue was with the um, precedence set by the, um, ap by the decision at Glenshiel. Now I know that um, some clarification has been provided in the papers um, by the application rejected at Glenshiel. Um, being a student of the law, I'm very interested in the proximity and, and, and precedent. Uh, and I, I wonder if, um, if we could have some clarification, if that's possible today, on, on why that application was refused, because it hasn't been provided in the information and the bearing that that has uh, on, on this application. Thank you. I have no idea what application you're talking about, Councillor. Uh, we have in, in, in other considerations which aren't material, um, the objectors point to an application at Glen Sheila, it's um, uh, item uh, 8.5, where a group of chalets uh, were rejected. Uh, we're assured that uh, different policies applied and the chalets were of a different design and were seen in a different landscape setting. I was wondering if it, it might not be possible since you know, you're obviously not familiar with it, but if, if that would be possible to get My introduction is that Sheila is 70 miles away. Is it not? If that's the place that, that you're talking about. And each application is, is dealt with on its own merits. And you can't say, you can't compare one application on the East Coast, one on the West Coast. But maybe the planners can. It's it, it in the objections, and I think just for the sake of an informed decision. Um, although well, I'm happy with your explanation. We will pick up on that point. I just wanted to, to gather the points and then I think we'll pick okay, to the, to the um, uh, planning manager. Councillor McLean. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I know the area quite well um, because I, I had friends that used to live up at a long time ago. And although I can appreciate what Councillor um, Sinclair says about uh, the Ben Mavis Hotel being a, an old Victorian hotel, and these are modern designs. If you go behind the Ben Mavis Hotel and on the other side of the road up Gardeval, 90% of the houses are very modern um, and take advantage of the views over towards the golf course on the other side. So I don't have an, an, an issue with, with this design that's been amended. I was um, unclear about what it meant on page 33 about the design and materials also provide a less permanent feel. What, I, I mean, a caravan has a less permanent feel, but somebody could live in it for years, and I wasn't sure what what that meant. Um, but I mean, this, I think this would be, you know, very good for the the area for Strathpeffer because it's, it is a busy busy area for tourists. Um, but and I appreciate if it be wanted to become residential accommodation, then we would have to come back and uh, ask for a, a change. To, to the planning, but when it's been let out every day, if they are lucky enough to get people, what, what's the difference between letting it every day and it having a less permanent feel? I, I'm, not I'm not sure that was now. Thank you for these comments. For no other comments, I'll pass on to Julie to respond to the ones we have. Is that all of them now? <laughs> right, okay. Um, Historic Scotland don't require consultation unless it's a Category A listed building, but the application has to be for the demolition of the greenhouse and the um, outbuilding has to be referred to them before we can issue a decision. Um, the other thing you asked about was the four house rule, I think. Uh, the four house rule has now effectively been removed by the adoption of the Highland Wide Local Development Plan although there are some guidelines in roads special. Sorry, it's affordable housing. Is that what you were referring to, Councillor Campbell? Affordable housing. Affordable housing. Uh, well, if they became permanent residents, they would have residences. They would have to have planning permission for that to happen, and at that point we would have to look at affordable housing. But because these are actually put forward as a business use, for uh, tourism, for letting two families in association with the hotel. I mean, members may be aware, Creef Hydro is the same. They have a big hotel, they have chalets in the gardens, and people go in and eat in the main hotel, uh, but families are largely resident in the, in the grounds, and that gives them a bit more freedom uh, and flexibility. So it's, it's a business model that's been used elsewhere, but affordable housing doesn't come into a chalet business development. Um, sorry, I thought you were talking about road standards. Um, Councillor Sinclair, you were talking about the Community Council's comments. There were a number of 
Community Council comments um, over the whole time period that this was under consultation and I think what has been summarised in the papers was their, their not what came in yesterday but their latest response um, and I'm not entirely sure if that's on IDOCS but I will check that it is because uh, it should be uh, and they were saying that they're, they're supportive of the principle of the development um, but it's the only issue that they have left relative to the overall thing is the is the appearance of the chalets. You were asking about um, shielding and screening from the village. You can see from this slide, which is why I've left it up. Well, you can if the slide goes on, please. That, and you could probably see as well from the Google Earth flyby, there are trees here which are to be retained. The trees in poor condition are coming out and those a few for the development itself, but these trees beside will be kept. There's big trees in here that will stay. Uh, tree groups will be staying within the development, and so the, again, these will be shielded by them, and these will sit against them, which helps them to sort of recede in the landscape again. There's a few smaller trees coming out here. Trees in poor condition over here are going to be um, taken out and some new planting as well. So the the tree setting, the tree hillside actually gets a, a sort of an overhaul and it gets the tree management that it needs and it gets some new supplementary planting. So we consider overall that this will help the development to settle into the hillside and yes it is a rising hillside but I'm not sure how much of this will be obvious. I don't think it will be very obvious at all once it's, once it's finished and the landscaping is in. Um, I mean this is a very different setting from Robertson House, which is obviously a, a building in a town centre in Dingwall. You know, this is one of the big Victorian hotels, and it, at the time that it was built, it was, um, you know, had extensive grounds, and the development, if you like, has crept in round about it in subsequent years. So we would take this as a different setting from Robertson House, which needs a different solution, and we consider that this is far more sensitive. I mean, the original application that we have, I've got some visualizations of, if you want to see, which had um, steeply pitched roofs, although they were finished in tin, and their impact on, in the setting was much more significant than this is. Um, 